Hey everybody, welcome to the episode three second shot happy hour. We are here with our players uh, after uh, the fight with our vampire. Uh, just as a reminder, this is not family friendly, so if you have kiddos or little ones listening, remember they may or may not uh, be good listening to this video series. So with that, I'll give you a chance to leave and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. So you know, you know. <laughs> so this time, our players went and tackled a undead foe. And if you watched or the beginning of this video, you know what it was because I said it. But uh, we had a undead bad guy, and this was our first episode of a larger, uh, a higher CR, I should say, uh, bad guy. Uh, so first, let's do a toast to the fallen, to Skeen. Radiant Light, Vlad, and Yurith. A toast to the, the dead ones. Did you guys forget beers? I have no... No, I have no alcohol today. I just got uh, my hard... Li like, do I do my de my shot now or later? Thrust. Your shot Thrust. comes next. No, that's next, and it's me because you guys killed my bad guy. Oh. So I've, oh, okay, cool. I've, I've got my mind ready, which is right now. So I'm so excited. Let him do it. You guys <laughs> fit, you guys killed my bad guy, so I get to do the shot this time, because uh, you ruined all of my plans, which we are about to talk about. <laughs> I will join you, though, because I, I was... I already poured something out for myself, okay. so I'm going to join you. <laughs> all right. I, too, will join you, because I have... Issue, because it's but... Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, we did, uh, a nice blue man group, um, shot glass. I got to see them live. That was pretty awesome. I don't think anybody knows who that is, but they're awesome. I, I think sure. they're pretty popular. Who so, is it? Blue Man Group. Oh, the Blue Man Group. Yeah. Oh, they play, man. They play, the, they play the off strip places in uh, in Vegas. Yep. I just know that one song. <clears throat> oh, they do they sing? No, okay, they don't I even. See. They they don't Wait, talk. No. They, they, oh, they, 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 they just they like mimes with flashing lights and blue paint. Yeah, right? they're, they're big. Oh, they're, I'm just they're thinking big of thing, that song. Then when their it's big like... thing is paint drumming, where they like put like they have tenor drums and they, like they pour paint on it, have giant fog lights shining underneath through, and then they play the sound reverberates the paint off, and it's really really dope. And people pay to go. I to have a blue house with a blue window. Okay, shot. Uh, no, are you ready? All I'm of. Yeah, <laughs> I want to drink too because I've got issues. All right. So, I do have my chase. To my fallen bad guy. To the fallen dead. To that. Yep. <laughs> the the, the re-dead motherfucker. Would you take the It's Aaron? been a long time since I've done a shot. Mm. Well, then, <laughs> Me okay, too. So you got the warm-up one out of the way. Now take your shot. <laughs> well, well, we'll need to wait a little bit. You're the DM, I'm, man. You I'm not in my college out. days anymore. Yeah. Oh, man. I've, I've, I've been sick the last two days, and that just opened up everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into our episode here. So, yes. our episode hook. You were the members of the Hellriders dispatched to take care of a problem with undead. And we started with you guys already making your journey out. So, as a episode hook for at least a one-shot, um, how was that? Did you feel too railroaded? Would you have liked to have done a little bit more setup? What, what were your thoughts on how that began? I think it went well. I think, like, what you've been doing, like, the past two episodes has been pretty good. Like, it's a one-shot, you know? Like, you definitely want some time for the characters to grow into them and, like, people to get a feel of their characters are playing. But you definitely need, like, um, a, like some type of... I forget the term of it in, like, a book, but, like, the exciting event that, like, like gets, that arouses the adventures and the main characters to, like, pursue something. And I think you've done a really good job, like, making that very apparent. Mm -hmm. While also, like, not being, like, we just start in an area like we just start and there it is more just like we've already been tasked with this we already have a little bit of backstory so when we get there we kind of have some time to explore right and i think that's a good show of us doing the, the pre-videos we do where we make our characters and come up with this background for those of you watching that is one part of a session zero and so i highly recommend doing that don't just show up with your friends and say all right here we go let's play we'll learn the rules as we go getting that background kind of primes everybody to to get into the mood and, and, and kind of know their characters yeah um, i would i would make a suggestion okay i mean that last episode run a little long 
Uh, it would have ran longer if we would have played by the rules. It would have ran longer if you hit all of my enemies, but I actually pulled one of the encounters out. Yeah, so, you know, I uh, completely lost where I was going with that. <laughs> you know, okay. well, I, I just, uh, do, you, do you think it started think too slow then? It was, well, to, you know, we, it's a one shot, yes. And, you know, generally three and a half to four hours. You know that's that's generally one shot time frame, and at the end there we were kind of rushed, so the build up was a little slow. Mm -hmm. I, I thought. I mean, I mean it. I don't know. It, did, it maybe it was just the combat rotations and everything, and the role playing in the in the tomb mm -hmm. that slowed us down more. It definitely um, took a lot longer than I was expecting. Um, yeah, I, and I, I, I would just think if 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 we're going to be doing build up like that for mm -hmm. the sake of keeping viewers mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we probably need to ramp the boss up i mean i know i was the whiny bitch that cried the first time when we got massacred mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know it i i just think from a viewer perspective i mean well, let, well let's get to that because i think that is a good talking point when we get to our boss fight and, and how that happened because part of what this series is for is say like, all right how can four players of the same cr take on an equal bad guy um, so yeah, well, let's touch back on that when we get to the end. Um, so let me jump into Manny. Um, remind us the, uh, Radiant Light, your build, uh, what you did and kind of how that played out through the adventure and anything that surprised you, anything that was bad, anything that was awesome. Um, so he was Paladin, uh, Oath of Devotion. Um, I don't know, just... I had never played the Paladin before, and just the the stats were crazy on that guy. I, I once I was done building him, and again I wasn't going for min max, but I think that's just <laughs> what I unconsciously that's what I unconsciously like do when I'm building the character sheet. And I looked at his sheet and it had a plus fifteen for charisma, and I said, "That's wrong. How? In what world?" And uh, just the, all his abilities. Did, so, did you even get a chance to use Smite? I did. Oh, I did. Okay. Uh, okay. So at, at that level, he already has improved smite. Mm -hmm. So each attack I dealt already had radiant damage. Okay. Yeah. All but right. I did use I did use smite at least like once or twice. Okay. Uh, that... Yeah. There was a there was a lack of smites if I remember correctly. I was like yeah. saving them. This this so, what I for, 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 me like I... for those of you that uh, <laughs> couldn't tell by our change of clothing uh, halfway through the episode, uh, we had Christmas break uh, in filming that. So that's probably part of the reason uh, I forgot some of the stuff and uh, uh, and maybe why I forgot about the smites. But cool. Anything else on uh, playing that build, uh, Manny? No, it was really fun. But uh, I think getting there from like a lower level, you'll definitely want to get there faster. It was fun. Cool. Uh, so you guys went into, your, uh, into the field where you met uh, the vineyard owner, Talon Nash. Uh, and I was trying to set up, I know there was a little bit of talk about how was the vampire outside um, under this, but I was trying to set up that it was at dusk, so the, the direct lies of the sun weren't there. He was under a tarp, and he was wearing a big straw hat. Um, so that's kind of how I was trying to keep that together. Um, it, was that too much? Was that too little? Uh, I, I figured that one out pretty quick. When did you figure it out? Before we dropped into the hole. So, like in in the introduction, that like what yeah. what well, was what, we're, what gave it away? It I don't know. It just the name. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, the name. Talon I, Nash. I did G N A S H like gnashing of teeth. I did use an NPC builder and Google and did the evil names look up and picked from there. So maybe that was too evil. <laughs> yeah, it just, I mean, it was, that, I mean, I'm, if, if people remember watching when, uh, when Manny, when Radiant was handing him the, the holy water I typed in there, accidentally spilled some on him, you know, <laughs> because I already knew that was him, you know, but. And, and that, that was, was I was not expecting that Manny. So I was like, all right, this is bad. He should not have this. But I can't refuse it because that would give too much away. So I was like, all right, we'll just take it and see what happens. <laughs> I had absolutely no idea. I was like, Zempsey needs to live. Here's some holy water. Let's get it. 
All right, so you approached him, and he fell into the hole, and that was instant combat. Uh, Bo, uh, when you saw that, tell us how that uh, happened with... Um, was that a good way to force the player characters into combat? Yeah, I think so, especially being Hellriders. I mean, I think it was a good way for us to get in there, just because that is one, like, why we were there, and two, it's part of, like, what we do. Right, and that was my thought on that is because one thing I want to show in these is for DMs that are watching how to get their players to act in a certain way. Remember, I did that with the guy kicking the bunny rabbits in the first episode. Um, <laughs> that's why I, th I think it's interesting, though. Um, that's why I think it's important to know like how your character re would react to certain situations because like, like in this given circumstance, we're obviously we were all you know fighters or at least. Like that that is what we were trained to do, but I feel like if the party comp was different. You don't you don't necessarily always need to come in guns blazing to every situation. You can it's worth it to talk out situations, but sometimes depending on the type of characters you have or the, the group comp, it's it depends on how you like address a certain situation, which is a big reason I feel like why we ended up jumping in there. Yeah, well just you just you just need to remember Skeen told you at the beginning Let's not go underground. And what happened? The DM forced we you died. underground. <laughs> we all died. I feel like that's the kind of the point of these episodes, though. Somebody, so... somebody, go ahead and throw an asterisk next to "died." That's true. <laughs> yes, I'm the one that took the shot today. <laughs> all right, so moving on. So you dispatch the werewolves, the uh, vampire uh, familiar, and the uh, zombies. Uh, so I just threw all the undeads I could at you since that was the theme of our episode here. Uh, and I think there's a ghost in there too. Yeah. Uh, so once you guys cleared out that room, then we would go into the ex exploration pillar of D and D, and you quickly chose the room where the chanting was coming from, uh, and then the sneaking in. Uh, for oh, those of man. you, so <laughs> if you could have seen my screen. That succubus was outside the room, and I was moving it around, figuring, all right, where is it going to come in? A little bit of a DM trick, but uh, I wanted to try and pick some people off. And actually, um, right before that happened, I think it was as you were entering that room, that is when Nash got a charm off on um, uh, Skeen. So, Skeen, and I'm asking this question in terms of for a DM to know how this affects player agency and your ability to play the character how you want and to have that either taken away from you, not totally, but partially, how did that feel to be charmed in that situation? Well, okay, well. it sucked, all right? I mean, because, I mean, you guys play with me in our regular campaign, and I'm the guy that just says, fuck it, and starts shooting. You know, when when things ain't going well. And so on one hand, it kind of felt like it removed some of my agency, you know, my play style. But on the other hand, it also made me feel engaged because by not doing what I would normally do, I was role playing the character. Good. No, I feel that, though. It's it's also hard, though, because like, I don't know, at least because I've been charmed in other parts of our stuff, but it. Like, I felt like it was... I wanted to act charmed, but not give it away, like, be so obvious, but it's... Yeah, exactly. You want you want to try to still still kind of stay within the parameters of what your guy would yeah. realistically do in this situation without letting all your boys know that... You know, but we knew up. instantly. It was like, this dude, he's acting sus. <laughs> Board <laughs> beef right now. We need to, to figure this out. Yeah, and then that, because uh, cause I had designed this adventure prior to knowing what Radiant Light's abilities were going to be. And so once I saw that and I was prepping, I was like, crap, I can't charm him or anyone near him. So getting that out is going to be hard. And that's a big part of, of doing a vampire as a big bad is you need time to get that vampire to charm the party members. Um, yeah, and then, you know, enter Chuck that always plays the character with the ranged attack that stays back. Yes. Yeah. Was that the room where we killed all those worshippers? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. When I was back by the door. And then, uh, How the brutal. And then the breeze who came in. I, for 42 days, thought about that. Because that was <laughs> horrible. 
That's so bad. <laughs> uh. All right, moving on. So you went into the cultist's room, took out the uh, cult leader, uh, the Glabrezu that they had oh, summoned, bad. and uh, a succubus uh, that was hiding in the corner. Uh, and then went down to that bottom room. So if you go back and watch my DM video, I actually didn't plan anything in that bottom room where the um, the altar was. So all of that was completely made up by me. So maybe if I had planned it out, it wouldn't have gone the way it did. But uh, I think the combination of trying to give you guys clues on what the big bad may be and Vlad rolling a 20 um, on that investigation check. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay. talking about where... No, that's where we that's where we stopped for our break where like Vlad splashed him with the holy he asked him for the holy oh water, okay then he splashed and he just, him and Vlad flew yeah the second like that happened off. it was like yep all right <laughs> um, so before we get to that Sam tell us yes. about your build for the ranger and any improvements that it may have made on the original ranger oh yeah well it's been very like widely discussed and whatnot like forums and stuff that the ranger has some really cool abilities that makes them very unique for like a unique play style but a lot of their core like class abilities are very scarce to be used like they don't come in as frequently as others so for a very long time a lot of people were, were saying like oh the ranger's underpowered this and this and that and like, i was like the ranger i thought it was like really cool i think of like you know aragorn from lord of the rings when i think of ranger stuff because that's exactly what he was what he is and so when Tasha's came out with like optional class features, they basically like every class maybe had like two or three and some of them were really cool. And then this and then the Ranger just had like 15 and some of them were like full replacements, enhancements. And so reading these, it just added like a lot more to the character to give and stuff like the temp HP I could give, the um, greater invisibility I could give for a turn. That was all from Tasha's and it kind of really helped. I, I, felt, I felt a little bad forcing you underground with your flying mount. Honestly, I was worried about that, and there was one point where I did fly mm -hmm. on Sigurd, and I was wrong about that. That's like a 15th level feature where I can fly on my okay. dragon. So, like when I when I like flew over the um the room of all the debris and stuff, I was shouldn't have been able to do that. So yeah, that was kind of I, a I, jump I, on a glide, though. That's yeah. okay. You you, you stopped yeah. your pursuit, so I don't really think it affected. Sometimes, you yeah, it actually cool worked out well because at that time, I mean, yeah, but like point, I can I was still charmed. But yeah, I can. And like, I was gonna, you know. Vlad was my friend, but I had to stop him from hurting and challenge, so I you was gonna, Vlad's friend. I was gonna shoot shoot Sigurd in the leg. Vlad so started off being cool with the group, and then by the end he was like, I don't agree with the captain. I don't he, <laughs> What do you mean I don't agree with every time the captain every time the captain every time every time Captain um Radiant said something, I was like, Yes, a little bit grudgingly because Skeen was getting in the way. Yeah, exactly. But he was always loyal. He was always loyal. But um, like, like, yeah, but, but yeah, like going going back to the question, yeah, I thought it like it definitely gave a lot to um, kind of improve. And then also the new subclass that was like fully fleshed out and like Fizzman's Treasury of Dragons, I was able to like go from like the typical ranged ranger and do like a strength based melee combatant, kind of like channeling like a Hell Rider, but in like the most literal sense. It's like you don't have a steed, you have a dragon to. to to ride and whatnot and just lance people because i never seen lances used in like any any D, &D i've played right so it was it was a lot of fun it was it was a lot of fun and you know i've read some of the stuff too online and having that having your the ranger's pet be almost like a wizard's familiar that you can just poof in and out the the talk of and this would not maybe come up so much in a one shot but in a longer term campaign it would be difficult either as a player or a DM to try and establish that bond between the ranger and their pet, because that really the pet can't really die because they can just be summoned right back. Yeah. Did, did we ever get into anything like that, or, or where you, you get to the point where you know there's that bald eagle meme stare and it says you know the wizard's gonna go cast fireball on on touch on that thing and blow up. You can do the <laughs> same thing with Sigurd almost. I don't really think to like that extent it was more because like when it came to like the summon for Sigurd and the dragon it's a little different than find familiar because like you are you're limited mm -hmm. to how you can revive it but it's kind of similar to how other like more recent summons like for druids or like the artificer and stuff mm -hmm. have done where it's like oh you summon it with a long rest but if it dies you can revive it with a spell slot and right. stuff like that so it is a class feature but then to revive it when I need like a spell slot first level or higher. When it came to the breath weapon, you had to use 
it had one use, but then you could use it again with a third spell slot or higher. So at this level, I was able to do like five breath breath attacks, and it was like really really cool. Nice. <clears throat> and I think yeah, I used every single one. <laughs> like every like I definitely found like right in the first combat, I had done every I've utilized everything the ranger could do in battle, okay. and found that it was effective, but I could keep doing it as well. And I thought that was a lot of fun also. Cool. So then you're in that room. Uh, at what point were you thinking Talon Nash was the big bad? I don't know. He just kept following us around. <laughs> like, we told him to kind of, like, stay back and stuff, but he was, like, kind of following, like, scotch-free. And, like, we were getting attacked by a lot of things. So it's like, then he was nowhere to be seen. Then he just poof all together. And favorite enemies, like, Vlad's favorite enemy being, like, undead was, mm -hmm. like... Maybe this is weird. So then he started getting like iffy. So that's why he was he was very brunt. He wouldn't like kind of ask things. Right. So he wouldn't so be like, can in, I speak with holy water? It was more like, I'm going to do it. In the room where that necromancer was, um, yeah. you guys didn't get a chance to search that room. But there was a, a bunch of spell scrolls for, uh, I should have looked this up before, but there's a spell that can change um, and hide someone's uh, creature type. And so every day, the vampire would go in there and use one of those spell scrolls and that's why he did not come up as undead for you. Cool. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. So that's how I hid that. Yeah. And there are also some, like, core, like, classic um, ranger ranger ability, like, core abilities that I use. I didn't just do, like, I just didn't do everything from Tasha's. There was some right. core stuff I used. So then you found my bad guy, and uh, the chase was on. Uh, Yurith, I know you didn't get to use a lot of the uh, barbarian stuff when they get down low in health but at least yeah. uh you did get to use that wild shape into the elemental stuff i it, did how was it up to that point um well with it being the one shot like it was and not a long range campaign in order to like wild shape into an elemental like that you have to exert like two uses of your wild shape as opposed to just a one for a, like a cr three creature like i could have been at the time so uh, that's why initially, like, the first half of the episode, I didn't want to film it because I could only be that for, like, such a amount of time. So I didn't want to, like, use it too early and end up wasting it. Gotcha. But when I did get to use it, it was very nice. Uh, I The touch attack I found kind of lackluster, but the ability to just light things on fire uh, was a blessing and a curse we found at one point when we, were trying, when we went through that one room and I lit it all on fire. Well, that, that helped in that 10-foot-wide tunnel where you just had them pinned up against the wall. There. I mean, that was nice. That's what I'm saying. It's a blessing and a curse. So it's, it's you know. Good. Um, I, you know, having that big old gap like we did, I completely forgot this. But I had the animated shield, which I could have used the entire time, boosting my IC up. You wouldn't have touched me this entire <laughs> time, Aaron. You wouldn't have even touched me. We would still be fighting those ghosts, probably. <laughs> That's true. Because I could, I could have turned my spell slots into health, and that's what I was really looking forward to. Yeah. All right, so you made it all the way down uh, and killed the vampire, so he went into mist form. And then he had two hours to get to his resting place, uh, so that's when we moved him down that hallway. Uh, in a normal campaign, uh, you guys would... It would have taken time for the vampire to regain a hit point, and you would have destroyed that coffin before he had a chance to do that, and you would have won. Uh, I had uh, I had one ghost sitting uh, at one room you guys didn't make it to, so I was like, all right, how do I end this? So I was like copy and pasting a bunch of ghosts in that room there at the <laughs> end, um, making that happen. Uh, so any questions you guys have for me from that episode? Um, when it came to planning the, from a DM's perspective, and you probably go over this in your video, did you find? A vampire bot big boss, which is like a classic monster from like you know, ancient like lore and like mythology from the world, but also in like D and D. Do you find actually playing a vampire against us to be lackluster in any way? I think it does at that level because uh, I remember at Curse of Strahd, does that go to level eleven? I I wouldn't know. And and so I think you're facing Strahd at level eleven instead of thirteen. So I, I think going in at the same level, it was a little easier. Um, and I think it would be more, it, not as effective in a one-shot, but I think more effective in a longer campaign yeah. where the vampire has time to get those charms off um, and more time to escape and go places. Yeah. Where's he going to escape, Aaron? It, def it definitely Central, seemed baby. a little... Um, Where's he going? It definitely <laughs> seemed a little uh, lackluster because even you were just like, they have nothing in combat. Right. 
And I, I don't know, like, I just was like, yeah. Like, aren't they spellcasters also, in a way? He had a, a, a few things, but not, not a whole lot. A lot um, like, okay. I think it was invisibility. Uh, he could change his looks. Um, to, okay. th- there are some more utility type things. Than yeah, to, to that makes things. sense. That makes sense. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, cool. Well, that will end yeah, I mean, our... Really, uh, with, the, with the vampires, it's the, the minions and the ghouls yep. that, that really make them dangerous. Yep. So, uh, if anyone's going to run a vampire one-shot, throw more minions at your players, at least if they're the same level. Give more times to get charms off. Yep. All right. Uh, that'll be our episode. So we'll see you for episode four, where we're going to change things up and do, if not an evil one-shot, a neutral one-shot. So <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Me kids. Blah. <laughs>